What's up, YouTubers? So I put together a wildlife video, 10 minutes. But before we get in that, um, just gonna warn you, at the end we do a post wrap up. And that's really kind of where the meat and potatoes is. It kind of starts out with the gear that I was uh, choosing to use, some of the pros, some of the cons, some of the weaknesses of some of this. And if you really kind of want to get past that first kindergarten level of you got your camera, stick around. Um, we're going to just go over, again, the pros, the cons, the things that are really important to actually getting some photographs. And it's going to make you think a little bit differently on your gear choices and what you might want to do for wildlife photography. So anyway, we'll talk after the video. All right, we are set up, boys. It is, it's a warm one, man. Whew, it's probably 90 degrees. This tent makes it, this pop-up blind makes it even a little bit warmer. So we're waiting for, waiting this out for Blue Heron. When I came in, I scared two of them. They'll come back. Um, hopefully they'll come back here in another half hour or so. Come back and we'll see what their reaction is to this new pop-up blind. Um, it's a little bit smaller than I thought. I thought it was going to be a little bit larger, but it's serviceable. Anyway, we're just going to wait this out. Hopefully they show up tonight and we can get some photos or at least some video in that jazz. Yeah. Okay, it's show time. We, we got one that showed up here.
turkey. I think that's a turkey coming in. Yeah. Getting everything nowadays. This gets a little tight in here, kind of tight on the shoulders, so I kind of have to lay down and just kind of wait and see if I can hear some birds or something before I peek back up. But yeah. Oh, I just got to wait this out. Okay, I was just getting out of the tent, and guess what? Blue heron right behind me. I'll show you some of the footage. Thank you. 
All right, so we've seen the video, 10 minutes, all kinds of different birds. I have some things that went well, some things that need improvement, and I got lucky on a few other items. Let's first jump into this, the positive items. I make a list, and it's always good to kind of go over a list of things like this. It's like a post-op, things that, that actually were very positive, things that were negative, things, you know, you could do better. Anyway. That some of the positive things. The blind worked out excellent. I would, I would say the blind, that was the first time out with that, is a Tarragon V3 or something like that. It's It worked better than I expected. The birds did not see me. I mean, they seen the blind, but they didn't recognize that I was a person inside it. And that's everything you want to do. They were curious. Some got up very close. Some got behind me, as you guys seen the, the blue heron. But yeah, that worked out fine. Did some pre-scouting. The pre-scouting with that hot weather got the birds coming into that little watering hole. Just hot and heavy. I'm, no pun intended. It was just very, very active there uh, for the two or three hours that I that I sat there. So that that actually, the spot location, the setup, everything went really, really well. Bug elimination. You guys see I wear a bug suit. In addition, the tent kept them out. Didn't really have any mosquitoes, gnats. The, the sand got in the tent, but... Other than that, I was I was pretty comfortable outside of the heat. That that also went a lot better than I expected. Overall, the, the light was decent, um, cloudy, then spots of, of sunshine, so that was really nice. We got some different types of views. You know, the turkey were, were bright and some of the, the the kill deer were a little bit on the shadow side. But yeah, it's a good diversity of light there. That went pretty well. In addition, the photos and the video I think turned out pretty good. It's it's pretty much as good as I could shoot. I had plenty of opportunity to to kind of execute. Now, if I missed something, that was all on me, but the, the birds were there, very plentiful, a great amount of time and all that. So manual focus. Manual focus went pretty well. I was kind of going in and out besides using um, automatic focus, but there's twigs, there's all kinds of stuff in the way that you just have to adapt to. And I don't think people realize, like, everybody's on the eye, animal focus, and it works out well, but when you got a lot of bush, bushes or shrubs, it's going to fail. And you just have to learn how to use manual focus and learn how to adapt. You just can't stop and, and kind of just quit right there because it's not working. Some of the things that I can that I improve upon or do a little bit better. One is test out my gear a little bit more. Now that blind worked awesome, but I didn't know it was that small inside. I set it up at home worked well, but I didn't put my camera bag inside the blind to see how tight that, that fit was. And it's really tight in there. So just one of those things, just make a note of it, test out your equipment pretty thoroughly before you actually go out in the field and, and do that in the setup. I did set the, the, the blind up, but I didn't set it up all the way. And I was a little bit curious and I think it, it worked okay. The other thing that uh, I messed up on was, was not bringing equipment tools with me and i make this mistake all the time because i'm afraid that a pair of pliers or pliers is going to get in my camera bag my lens bag and scratch the lenses or or damage stuff so what the, the issue i had here was the actual extension this is a piece that um on my other ground pod that actually uh would not come off i put it on so tight i'll move this sorry Let's see if this actually comes off this is what i call an extender and it goes, I'm, I make this one, this is just a, a tin pan, you guys can make this stuff, but the extender gives you probably three or four inches on the top of that to, to boost it over. I could not get that off in, in this last video with that. I, I didn't have a pair of pliers or anything, so just bring equipment with you, because it could have been a deal breaker, it could have been stuck on here, and I really actually needed the elevation to get to the birds to prop up the camera a little higher. I was worried that it wasn't going to get that eye eye contact. It was going to be too high and I was going to point down. But as as luck would have it, I was pretty much dead on, which which awesome because there's little hills and bumps in the way that you want to get just a tad over that so you don't have a hill in your way of the bird and that. So that went well. Got lucky. I'll take that as a win. So the next one deals with my lens, and that's the IBIS. Now you notice in sometimes when I have it on a stable platform, the ground pod, the, the video was kind of doing this. It was kind of waving up and down. And what that is a mistake of is I was getting so um, so worried about other things is the image stabilization. You can put it on tripod mode, which kind of 
It doesn't do the image stabilization this way, it just does it this way. Now this is a 50-50 deal because the, the image, you see some of the, the video is going up and down. Just note that sometimes if the, the lens is sticking outside of the blind, you have wind that will kind of bump it around or, or wind that will move your actual blind and it makes the jitters. This video was shot at probably 1600 millimeters, a lot of that. So it was very susceptible to jitters. And I think it did a fairly good job being at 16 and 2000 millimeters. I'll take that as a win, but just know next time I'm probably gonna mess with, with the image stabilization, either turn it off or just turn it to tripod mode. Comfort, that was the thing. I probably could have brought a old Pella or something with me because that's just one of the things. I do not lay down for three, three and a half hours straight and just kind of in a plank position worrying about um, the neck. And it does get tiring when you're, especially when you're kind of on a decline, you kind of have to really use that. So I probably would have brought some, some prop or something next time to kind of allow me to just kind of sit there and almost sleep in the position that I'm gonna photograph in versus always kind of on my elbows and, and with the camera and all that jazz. You guys probably noticed when um, I left out my water. <laughs> when I was setting up my tent, I left out the water. This is about 20 minutes in, I get in there and I'm like, oh my gosh, I, I'm thirsty and I'm not gonna get out now because the birds are just starting to get settled in about 20, 30 minutes into it. Just put it in your, put it in your camera bag. It's a mistake I make all the time, but it's just one of those things that could have ruined the, ruined the trip if I was really, really thirsty or something that I absolutely needed. Last one for the, some of the things that could be improved is I need a polarizer. This is one of the things I've been struggling with because they kind of can do some things. They're expensive. They get scratched. I break them a lot, but it's polarizer on some of the vegetation. You notice in the video, in the, the piece where you have um, the turkey coming in. There's like bright highlights off the, the vegetation. A polarizer will bring that down and make it very vibrant, very crisp. It won't be so highlight and contrasty that, yeah, I just need to need to spend 100 to $200 on a nice polarizer for, for the 600 mil lens. And speaking of that, the things I got lucky on bringing this lens. If I would not have brought this lens and I would have brought my 800 mil, and to you guys who shoot micro four thirds, take note of this. That last part of the blue heron that I actually had to move my camera. So I was essentially straightforward and I started to get out, started calling it quits. The blue heron moved, but there's a couple of them and I heard a little noise behind me. But before I get out of a blind, I always check to make sure if there's any animals that I'm not gonna spook. That being said, I pop open this little hole and I see a blue heron like 15 yards from me on my 45 degree angles. It's very tight in the blind. If I would have had my 800 mil, there would have been a few different reasons why things would have failed. I know what you're thinking. Well, if you had a small Nikon 500 PF, something about this size, it still would not have worked for that photograph or for the video. Reason being is it's just too much zoom. I had to back out to 150 degrees. So I had to take the camera unzoom everything to just to get it to move around, refocus it, and I needed a small camera. I couldn't do that with an 800 mil, the big one that I have. I couldn't, you wouldn't be able to do that with, with some of the, obviously the Nikons and some of these larger lenses. This is where Micro Four Thirds really comes into its own because Micro Four Thirds lens, the 100 to 400, is half the weight of this and it's like this big. And that's the reason why I really like small lenses and zoom lenses because if I didn't have a zoom, I would have been screwed on that. I would not have gotten that footage in some of the other photos because it's just too big. You've got too, much, too big of a footprint moving it around left to right, especially when you're in that tight corners. You just bring this in, move it around, and then extend it back out if you need to. So that I got lucky on because I was debating of bringing the 800 mil with me, and there just would have been no way to get that. And that, guys, wraps it up. That's the, the lessons learned from this. I wanna know if you got questions, comments below, but I kinda of like this, this part, you know, real world, and then kinda of talking about the things that can be approved. It makes me better, and hopefully, if you're thinking about buying equipment, things will ring in your head. You're like, oh yeah, man, this, that, that, I remember that. This guy had issues with it. I'm gonna have issues with it. And that's the thing, the lessons learned. So, comments, questions below, and hopefully, I'll see you next week.